All right, so if you want to get a bit more in-depth on how I texture stuff, please check the previous grenade texturing videos on Frag Grenade because this one is a bit faster in pace and I do not explain that much. I won't be able to explain that much. So right now I'm just baking ambient and caviche mapping and I bake it by just picking one of the dirt materials inside the paint room. And then I you know, reduce the opacity on the curvature map. So I have a little slight overlay of the curvature. And there's some kind of bug right now I'm looking at it. And then I'm just painting the dirt. And I wanted to use a fill tool to, to paint the whole thing with the dirt, but fill tool didn't look right. You can see it gave, creates explosions, don't know why. Sometimes it's pretty good, sometimes it's not. But you know, and I have to had to pick the brush and do it manually all over. I mean, it's pretty fast anyway, so it doesn't take that much time. Okay, created and named it, uh, created another dot land. So essentially for more active, um, more active dot. You see here I used the fill tool and it looked fine. So I don't know what's the issue with that. It just, uh, when I use the fill tool on, on the whole object, it looked way too much. So I decided to use uh, just a brush. And then I wanted to paint that gum that would be the, Yeah, I decided to use the fill on the object and then reduce the glossiness. Uh, and then I have this really nice coating that like makes it like a powder powder coating on the outside, like protective powder coating. And I'm just testing some brushes right here. And here I was, I didn't have any decals. Oh, actually I just painted on the top, just by accident really. And I honestly quite liked, quite liked the this kind of effect because it creates this bleached <clears throat> plastic look that you commonly get if it's been you know under sun for a little time. It's really really common effect. So if this guy's been in storage for a long time, you'll get this bleached look, even if it's would be kind of never used or anything like that. But. So I decided to go bonkers and cover everything in this green bleach. And you see that I've just uh, removed all other objects, so I can do a paint job without um, uh, painting on top of other objects. And I wanted to uh, paint out the ambient occlusion because ambient occlusion was just uh, painting everything pitch black. Like that laser side got pitch black because the ambient occlusion just uh, baked it black. Okay, I'm now I'm using a um, text tool. Uh, so text text tool is kind of interesting, but it's a bit it's really awkward to use. Honestly, like you you're way better off using a stencil and a stencil mask because you can see here I'm just trying to get this. You start with this, like you, you draw these guiding lines to draw the text, but it's just really, really tricky, honestly. Uh, like, okay, I got that, it looks pretty cool. Then it went down, got it again, it was fine. But then I wanted to, then I'll want to move it lower and I'll do it in a, in a second. And then I decided to draw these guys, uh, like, um, straight lines and honestly they don't really look that great but you know you draw them and then you remove them and they they are green so i decided they don't want to green so i used i went to the textures and adjustments and i made them all uh, white, but desaturating everything, or increasing the lightness actually of the layer in um, hue adjustments. So at this moment, I didn't have any decals, which I painted later, uh, like drawn later in Photoshop. 
so this time I was just thinking about what if I just pretend that I have some text there, but you know, in the end I decided that there is no way it looks good if I just paint something right on my. I have to, I have to actually go in Photoshop and spend a couple hours drawing uh, numbers and um, all those f funky decals that will make this whole thing look a bit more real, a bit more legit. And I had to essentially I wrote the whole instructions for how you speed and uh, on this particular gum at the bottom, and then it forms up and it can stick it. And yeah, I had to spend like t uh, five, ten minutes on that. So naming some layers because uh, we got a few of them and they're a little bit confusing. And, and you see, I'm doing it for myself. I'm not really doing it because I'm recording, but uh, just because it's so, it's hard to keep a track of it if you don't do it. And here I was just thinking about some kind of coating to drop by, some powder coating on top. And it kind of, again, this type of thing, when you drop it by, it looks quite organic. It looks quite natural. This kind of chalk stuff. Uh, Again, pretty common sub substance you can see in uh, um, different equipments and different stains. The one thing I, I found out, I was painting on the label, on the plastic label, which I didn't really want to. And then... But look at that texture. The texture looks pretty cool. Pretty, org pretty organic, quite real. And I've, I've and I've done it in like a, a few seconds, really, in, in a minute, less than a minute. Now I'm trying to use the that writing tool again, and you can see just just I have to move these guys over there, and it doesn't it jumps here and there. It's really awkward to deal with, and I was trying my best to deal with it. But it just gets stretched, and yeah, it's just not easy. So then I imagine that I would, I would spend some time typing something bigger than that, like a whole instructions in in a paragraph of that stuff. And I decided that there's no 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 there's no way I'm going to do that. I have to do it in Photoshop and then just uh, stencil it on top. There's really no way, there's no shortcut for that. And I wanted to do some painting, not sure why. Oh, yeah. Probably just adding a bit, a bit of dirt. It does help the texture, makes it a bit um, grimy. Right here, like fast forward a couple hours, I now have my decals already in a stencil palette. And I've decided to clean out all of that stuff because it was covering the top of the plastic label, plastic sticker. Oh. And I decided to also raise these guys. They were bothering me. I didn't like how they looked. And then I got that stencil with whole instructions just paint in there. Project it from camera. Make sure you do not uh, use a cube, cube mapping or anything like that. And yeah, it's, um, there you go. Nice clean stencil. Now I'm just trying to make a bit more worn out. And now I have all the small guys uh, and small labels which I wanted to put around. 
So I decided to put a triangle, and I actually changed the color for the uh, for it. I decided to go yellow. And I was thinking again and use this label like uh, shit to move stuff around. So I decided to put some dots around, some random stuff. Pretty easy. All right, some random numbers. Good old decals. Another stencil, bigger number. I think that was it for stencils, so just um, double checking what else can I put. Oh yeah, PWD, yeah, that's that's important. That stands for something, I don't know what, maybe powder, maybe, PW, powder. Yeah, that stands for powder. Just uh, raising the, I made occlusion from that uh, indents on the buttons because they were those dots were too dark. They looked like just dots. And I decided to extrude stuff here using just a uh, standard in a sculpt room, um, using a standard you know extrusion uh, to make it more like uh, the screws because that makes quite a bit of sense. And I wanted to paint some dirt on top because all that metal didn't have enough dirt it's, as I thought. And those guys too. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you for the phone video.